Hey, you know what? I am a, I'm one minute late, but for good reason, all right? Well, did you care to share with the class? Yeah, I was congratulating Jolly and Jerry on their newest podcast venture at John Boy Media. Hold on, you did that five minutes ago. I saw your tweet. I just did it again. You reset the tweet? I sent another one. I sent a couple congratulatory tweets, man. Okay. I, I sent one. A big day for our company. It is. I think it's great that we've got a, a Mets podcast. That's awesome. So that means that you won't get yelled at as much. I saw that in your tweet. Yeah, and you're wearing a Yankees hat on the day we launch a Mets podcast. But there's a reason. And I will explain. There's always a method to my madness with what I'm putting on this uh, kepe. All right? Is you're that your dust or is it a gray bill? It's a gray bill. Okay. Yeah, no, I've got all the old spring training hats. I got it a few years ago from my guy, Dave Eichenberger, um, and he sent me a bunch of them. And so I still wear them. They're really cool. I don't know if you can still get a lot of them. Like, this is the old red Cincinnati spring training cap. That's a cool hat. Yeah, so I've got a lot of them. That's there were some really to... bad hats they used to give out in spring training, Chris. Really yeah. bad ones. The one we were doing just like the flex fit, mm -hmm. brutal, ugh. Got it. Got it. All right. That. Should we get going here? A lot of stuff to talk about, even though there were only five games, a lot of interesting shit happened in baseball. Let's start with Fernando Tatis, who yesterday took on-field batting practice for the first time since re-entering his shoulder for like the 17th time this year. But it wasn't batting practice that caught everybody's eye. He was working in the outfield with outfield instructor Wayne Kirby. Do you think upon his return, we will and or should see Tatis in the outfield? Wow. I mean, I honestly hadn't given it much thought. Then you see these pictures, and you're looking at him scaling the freaking wall. He looks like a natural already. I think it's interesting, though, because I feel like a lot of people are saying, oh, well, he's – or at least they came out and said, too, like he might keep his shoulder more healthy in the outfield. Mm -hmm. And I guess to some degree you get less action out there. But I see outfielders getting injured all the time. Chris. Yeah, but there, there is less, like, there's a lot of diving plays at short. Like our guy Miguel Rojas yeah. made an incredible backhanded diving play last night in San Diego, right? If Tatis makes that, you're holding your head like a Padres fan every time he does it. I think we're going to be doing that every single time a ball's hit at him, no matter where he's playing, mm -hmm. until he gets this surgery, which he has to get it. Because I, I didn't know it. They said five times his shoulders popped out yep. since May or yep. March. That's crazy, dude. And I know right. it's not doing any more damage, but it hurts. And, like, then you're taking some time off. You want this guy on the field as much as possible. Um, I think really more it's for – I mean, do you think it's for his infield defense, the fact that he has been playing well? Is it more of that than the injury thing? Well, remember, when they traded for Frazier, we looked at each other and we said, this is a ton of fun. How are they going to get the right pieces on the field? We know that Frazier is a gold glove second baseman, gold glove caliber second baseman. He's way better there than he is playing left field. Now you move Cronenworth over to shortstop. How much do you miss? I get it. You know, Tatis throws 92-mile-an-hour seeds from short. Beginning of the year, he was really struggling defensively. But, you know, he made up a lot of ground the last two months. So now you could put Cronenworth and or Kim at short. And Kim is a two-war player. You know, he's not great, but he's not some stiff you're throwing out there. Where you're like, oh, God, really? No, he's solid. But if you put Cronenworth as your everyday shortstop and you put Tatis in right, I'm thinking that might be their best team. I mean, Kirby was saying that gives us two gold glove caliber outfielders. He was already talking Tatis up as a gold glover. I know it's not going to happen the first This is me season. pumping the brakes right there. Baby. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of good outfielders that play their entire life out there. Let's not forget, this is the freaking major leagues, man. I know I Tatis know. is a special talent, but you don't just put him out there, then all of a sudden he's better than a Kevin Kiermaier or a Byron Buxton or someone like that. And I think that's the other thing we have to talk about a little bit is they paid him as a shortstop, man. Mm -hmm. Now, well, if you can go play gold glove center field, and hit like the way he does, okay. But if you're going to put him now in right field or left field, that's a completely different contract. Well, wait, so you're telling me that you would not value – I mean, we – I would not, not value, value – no, I would I – would, they would not have given him a $340 million I, contract if he was a right fielder. I agree with that. But part of what you're, you were paying Tatis for, in addition to playing shortstop, was the bravado, the personality. Oh, sure, sure, sure. That's not worth $340 million, Chris. And, and – and 
we're looking at his – he still leads the National League in homers, I think. I think he's great. I'm not downplaying his potential in the outfield at all or, like, what he can do on the field. I'm just saying, like, when you sign – they signed that contract in spring training or whenever the heck it yeah, was. Like, it was 100% right. as a shortstop. You're right. You're right. Maybe there's a clause in there that if we move you to the outfield, you have to give some of the money back. I'm sure it's in the fine print mm -hmm. somewhere. I'll go over mm -hmm. it later today. Uh, so yes or no, he plays outfield when he comes back. It's sure looking like it. They wouldn't make the, They wouldn't do this much. They're uh, I don't know what the right word is for it. They're leaving some breadcrumbs. You know, like yeah. they're they're getting us ready for it. Uh, I think he does, and you know we'll I see do. how it goes. I, I'm rooting for him. I think he I could do. be excellent out there, but it's not exactly. It's not exactly the easiest thing to do, and it's not a for sure thing he's going to go out there and be a gold glover. I think it'll be fascinating. I agree. I think we see him in, in the outfield when he returns. Um, okay, Max Scherzer makes his second start for the Dodgers tonight, facing off against Aaron Nola and those hard-charging Phillies who have won eight in a row. L.A. or Philly, which team has a better chance of winning its respective division? Well... Uh, Fangraphs has the Dodgers. Don't give me the Fangraphs shit. Uh, well, Fangraphs. I'm explaining it, okay? Fangraphs has the Dodgers to win the division at 59.4% and the Phillies at 553 although the Dodgers are four games back and the Phillies are two games up. So, you know, I'm looking at schedules. The Dodgers' September schedule is fairly easy. I think that's why they're getting this nod here. Uh, but I'm going to say the Phillies. I, I, you know, the Braves made some improvements, but nothing crazy. The Mets made – they got Baez and, and some – what else did they get? They got Rich Hill, right? Yeah. I think the Phillies are – I think the Phillies are the best team in that division. You've been so on I'm going to give them the better chance to win it. I think the Dodgers are the best team in that division as well, but they're four games back, man. The Giants are, are, are just that good. You can't just right. dismiss them. I think – the Phillies have a lot less competition for that top spot. The Dodgers have to make up games, and the Giants are the Giants are better than any team in the NL East, obviously. How do you like this answer? Neither. But it's, that's a that's a totally plausible reason. You that's said who has a better chance. You didn't say and do they have like no. Who has a better chance? Yes, that's, you have two the, answers there. Neither. The and the correct answer could be neither because I think the Giants are winning the West. And I think, listen, listen closely. The Braves are winning the East. I said it. I don't. I don't mind the. I want the Braves to win the East because you know I picked them as my World Series team. You can't say. You can't say. Yes, you, can. you can say they're equally. No, no, no. I yes. can't. No, because I. Well, I you, think equally neither team will win its division. How's that? You can say they're. They have an equal uh, chance to win the division, and that chance is zero. Hold on. Let's throw this out to the chat. Chat, is that a fair response? Right? When that, The question is, who has a better chance, Phillies or Dodgers, of winning their respective division? If I answer neither, because I don't think either of them is going to win their division, is that not – Ploof is mad. Ploof so mad that – Not neither. You would it. say they both have the same chance, and that chance is zero. Yeah. Somebody said that's a cop-out, Rose. Nah. Somebody said 100%. Rose Treb is right. No. Oh, my God. I'm losing this argument. Not fair. Oh, God. Oh, I agree. There's an ag I agree. Like, two out of seven. No, that's not a good answer. No. Let's go. Chat. Let's All right. In that go. case. Because you always do that shit to me. That's why I did it to you. Well, no, no. It's, it's what you say. Sometimes what you say is, <laughs> well, it could be both or something like that. It's not plausible. Just give me the next question. Let's go, man. All right. Well, well, first, I want to remind everybody that today's Instagram Live is presented to you by our friends over at Manscaped.com. Go to Manscaped.com. Use the code word ROSE. You get 20% off your order plus free shipping. I'm telling you, folks, take care of yourself. South of the equator, that special someone in your life will love you immensely. I want to tell you what you get. You get the brand new lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. We're talking about high-powered, 9,000 RPM, motor-powered, 360-degree rotary dual-blaze system. What it means, basically, is no pulling, no tugging. Over the years, you've got to ah, Doesn't happen here. Plus, it's waterproof. In addition to that, you get the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, the Crop Reviver Toner, plus two free gifts. You got the Performance Boxer Breeze, which Michelle Rose loves, and the Shed Travel Bag. So go to manscaped.com, use the code word ROSE, get 20% off, and free shipping.
You're welcome. <laughs> Back to the show. Rays start a three-game set in Boston with a four-game lead over the Sox in the American League East. Why don't the Rays get more love? I've been thinking about this. Um, it's because it's like no-name baseball. I don't mean that to offend anybody on the Rays. I think there's a lot of – I love it when people say, no, I don't mean to offend anybody, and then you go offend a whole group of people. No, I think these guys are excellent ball players, but it's no one gets attached to the Rays because they're so – they get treated like interchangeable pieces there. Uh, that's how the organization runs. So there's no one you can fall in love with. Obviously, Glass now uh, kind of took that role. Kiermaier has been there a long time. He's the closest thing to like a household name for the Rays. And Glass now took that over. But he even says, I expect to be traded. I don't expect, I don't expect to be here long term. I think that has something to do with it. I was going to ask you if you can name, just name like a, the top four in their lineup right now. Like their starting lineup. Right. No, it's it's difficult. Like, I don't know where Wander Franco is hitting these days. Uh, I would say Lau, Austin Meadows is probably up there. Rosa Rainey, I think, is like on the COVID list. Yandy's probably hitting leadoff. G-Man's probably hitting about five or six. <laughs> there, are just, there is no set line up there. I mean, G-Man hit second yesterday. Uh, right. You know, Austin Meadows is fourth, then he's – or Austin Meadows has been kind of the clean – but the point is, Chris, I think it's just right. like – they treat ball players like interchangeable pieces. Yes, you know whatever fits that day, and I think that's kind of why they don't get as much love. But I mean, we try to we talk about them a lot. I feel like you know they they're a team that you know they just find a way to get it done. You know what we don't talk about them as a serious World Series contender. Oh, of course we do. No, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think so. I think if you were to go through and say. <laughs> Were they just in the World Series last year? I know, but that doesn't mean anything. They weren't. They weren't predicted this year to uh, to win the East, let alone represent the American League in the World Series. There were I, I don't know. You know, I picked the Rays to win the World Series last year. Okay, well, that was a, almost a good job by you. Almost, yeah. Almost. I think. Here's the deal: if you were to walk into the Trop and see the nine thousand to eleven thousand fans they have on hand at, every night, what do you think the number one jersey would be? It would still be Longoria. No, whoever they're playing. There's and nine thousand to eleven thousand is so generous, Chris. Like that's yeah, not I know. Really, that's not really happening. It, you know, everyone knows. You go down there and if you're playing the Cubs, you're playing the Yankees, if you're playing the Mets, any one of those teams that has a large national following, their their jerseys are gonna yeah, be they're swamped. The yeah. biggest, you know, jersey there. And then that, that's part of it. Uh but yeah, to your point, they should be getting more love because what they do year in and year out is pretty incredible. Well, I, I will say this. They don't have an MVP candidate, right? They hit a lot of homers, and they strike out more than anybody. Pitching-wise, they were going to have a Cy Young candidate in glass now, and unfortunately, he had Tommy John. They also strike out everybody, and they don't walk anybody. It's why they win ball games. It's why they made trades like the one they did for Willie Adamas for two more arms, because they just keep cycling guys through. You know, they pick up a guy in, in, you know, in a trade with the Indians. He gets hurt automatically. And they're like, okay, well, whoever's up, let's put them in there. We expect you to strike out guys and not walk anybody. So they are na they are a nameless, faceless winning bunch. That's it's interesting. It's interesting because Florida is such a baseball state at the amateur level. It's like Florida, Texas, California. Those mm -hmm. are the biggest baseball states. Right. Most, most guys come out of those three states. Um, but then you get you know, fan bases, the Marlins, the Rays, they're just not home – like, there are obviously some homegrown fans, but most of most, uh, the people seem to uh, gravitate well, towards other teams. Maybe that's because they're parents and stuff, I guess. That's what it is. That's what it is. And because the Yankees train down there forever. So yeah, they have Yankee, that exactly. And they're the biggest brand in the sport. All right, let's move on. Speaking of the Yankees, uh, crazy game last night. I think they scored in, like, the 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th, and 11th, or 8th, ninth, 10th, 11th. It's crazy. Uh, kept taking a lead, giving it back against the Royals, eventually won the game uh, on a day where they put another starting position player on the injured list in Glaber Torres. So I think they're 8-2 and two in their last 10. They're right in the middle of this thing in the wild card. Still have a chance at the American League East. Is it time we start giving Aaron Boone some credit here? Uh, I mean, yeah, we can give him a little credit. God, you're one of those. You have. I'm just the saying. Look, there's a lot of other things you give credit to before you give credit to Aaron Boone or any manager for that matter. I mean, look, 
I know I kind of get disrespectful of managers on this show. Yeah, you do. Um, I just think it's – there's more things. I mean, the Boston collapse has probably helped more than anything. Like, they were just playing they a still bad brand of baseball. They still the last 10 with a bunch of – go look at the – I'm not an excuses guy, but facts are facts. Go look at the guys that are on the injury list right now for the Yankees throughout their rotation, bullpen, and position players. You'd be hard-pressed to find any other team – that is struggling that much health wise. All right, then I'll throw it right back at you. Tell me what Aaron Boone has done to like make them eight and two. You don't think that bringing up young guys and getting them to believe that they can be major leaguers is just because you throw on a Yankee uniform doesn't mean you automatically think you're the shit. I'm sorry. You know that. There's been plenty I, of guys. I did, I did, but Chris, what what do you think Aaron has done? Like a pep talk? No, I think that any time that you can get guys to go pull the rope in the same direction, I think a manager deserves some credit. I mean, if not, then what do yeah, you have a little bit. just That's have like a robot a... in there that takes a lineup card and says, I must replace this pitcher <clears> in the sixth <throat> inning. And you still have to have the heartbeat of a, of a clubhouse, do you not? You, you do, and I think that's one of his jobs is to have that. Uh, but I, I think, you know, when a young guy comes up, it's less on the manager and more on the personal coaches, whether it's the hitting coach or the mm -hmm. pitching coach. They're more, you're talking to them much more than you're talking to the manager. Obviously, you have a relationship. Everyone has a relationship with Boone. Uh, but those young guys that come up, it's the hitting coaches in there getting them ready. Boone might come and say, hey, like, you know, good luck tonight. Like, you, you deserve to be here. Slap on the butt. Boom, boom, boom. But, you know, I think more, more credit needs to go to, like, the auxiliary coaching staff more more so than the manager I, the manager i'm telling you like it's it's really a media thing the manager plays for the, the has to answer questions for the media mm -hmm. yeah he does have to make some questions or some decisions during the game but a lot of those are printed out for him there's big charts that they have to go by i think the coaching staff does all right so i'm just gonna write this down please get rid of manager of the year award <laughs> it's a weird award it should be coaching staff of the year award because they give out so many of those in every other sport. I'm just saying, dude. It's it's just there's a coaching staff would be better. Staff I can't the wait. Award. I can't wait in five years when you get a managerial job. Oh my god! And I you won't. ask me to join your staff as your video coordinator. I'm gonna be like, guys, he's just a talking head. That's really all. He, he's just he's mastered this media thing. He's a good looking dude. You're like you were like Aaron Boone eight years ago. I could I could I could be a manager right now. No, you know it's it, it's. Down. I'm not saying it's it's a diff, it's a very difficult job, Chris. And I want to make that point. This is not like an easy job. I'm just saying. Sure, made it sound easy. No, it's it's, but it's not. You're giving it credit for the wrong things. That's fine. Yeah, like you give managers credit for how they handle the media, having your players back, going out there and saving them from getting ejected, getting on the umpire. By the uh, way, I think that's. I think that's part of what Aaron Boone has done pretty well. Yeah, but, like, you know, the play on the field is more so the auxiliary coaching staff. Just that's kind of, like, the bottom line here. So, like, staff of the year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a campaign for that. No more manager of the year. I want a coaching staff of the year. And the next time a manager goes in the Hall of Fame, I'm going to stand on the steps of Cooperstown and say, you are not allowed in here. Trevor Plouffe said you cannot come in. I mean, look. I've said this plenty, so I don't care about saying it. Joe Torre, I mean, notoriously known as one of the best managers ever. Uh, I mean, you could have managed the teams that he had, bro. Yeah, I know. And you would have been in the Hall of Fame. You've been sick. Would have been awesome. Would have been great. I don't look good in pinstripes, though, despite the hat I'm wearing. <laughs> uh, okay, last one. Hey, Mad Bum returns to San Francisco tonight for the first time in front of fans. I'm going to guess they're going to play some sort of video, you know, welcoming him back so everybody can stand and applaud and all that sort of stuff. Will Mad Bum either smile or show any emotion? Yeah. I don't care how, you know, tough you want to make yourself out to be. Like, that guy's got a lot of amazing memories in San Francisco. Yes, Three freaking World Series, uh, World Series MVP, NLCS MVP, and I'll, I'll say this about Giants fans. Like, they're good. They know their guys. Right. They're going to be – they're going to be – they're going to give him a huge ovation. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, he's – I don't know what he's going to do. He might not cry, 
No. But he might. Hey, he might, do. I'm telling you. Like, that's going to be emotional for him. You know what they should do? They should give him, like, a cow or something for his farm or something. You know, like, here you go. Enjoy this. They better show in the video him dumping, like, the six, trying to drink the six beers at once. That better be in the video or I'm going to be very disappointed. There better be at least one snot rocket in the video or I'm going to be disappointed. Uh, I, all I can tell you is this. He used to, whenever we would go do a game and the Giants would be playing, whether we were covering the World Series or, or, you know, occasionally we would take intentional talk on the road to do live pregames, he always did the same shtick with me. He'd come over, look me dead in the eye like he was going to kick my ass, shake my hand, and just move on. He wouldn't say shit. He would just – because, like, I always played up the fact I thought Bad Bum hated me. And I, I think maybe he does. I don't think he does. I think it's just how he is, man. Hey, he's a big boy, 6'4", 256. Oh, and his hands are huge. <laughs> yeah, I huge. wouldn't, fu I wouldn't oh. fuck a bad bum. All right, what do you have coming up on John Boy? Because i got to get to my workout in eight minutes. Oh. Uh, we are recording our um, Wednesday app of Talking Baseball for mm -hmm. John Boy Media. Today. Nice. Uh, I got an episode of Sequence coming out. We did this uh, Salvador Perez play that he did, and it's really cool. Wanna, wanna, like, I, sometimes I do good episodes of Sequence. Sometimes I do not so good ones. I think this is a really good one, so go check it out. Okay, good. Uh, so I've got, I got my workout. Then I got to shower quickly because I got Miguel Rojas and taping his episode, which will drop Thursday, with the number one relief pitcher in all of baseball, Brock Holt. Oh, That's right. I was wondering where you were going to go with that. That's right. Mr. 31 Miles an Hour is going to join us. We've got a lot of good stuff to talk Why about. Why do you have a Yankees hat on then? Because we talked about the Yankees today, and I wanted to you know, give some love to Aaron Boone. Okay. What? Usually sometimes, you have a better reason for wearing a hat. Than that. No, no, no. Sometimes, no. sometimes I just do it based on a topic that we have running. Tomorrow I've got a great new – another minor league team sent me. By the way, get on – Twitter and to implore your minor league teams to keep sending stuff because it's been going great. Like I hear the team sales are going well. We promote it on our social media channels and it helps them. So that, that's part of the reason I do it. I love the hats. I love the gear. Got, got some really, really good stuff. So. I love it, man. Let me, let me give a shout out. Um, what's the podcast called? I don't want to mess up. I think it's Shea Stadium, right? I believe that's what it's called. I just Hold saw on. it right before. Look it up. I got to do, I don't want to mess it up. I want to give no. a shout out. No, it's Jolly and Jerry Blevins, though, right? Shea Station. Shea Station. Jolly Olive, Jerry Blevins going to be doing the Mets podcast, Shea Station. I think they're going to drop the first episode today. People right. know Jolly from YouTube. Jerry is obviously a relief pitcher for the Mets and for a million different teams. And he's, yep. I don't know about a million different teams, but for a long time. So go check that out. I think that's really cool. Yeah, no, it's great. We, we're continuing to expand the family, so keep enjoying the, uh, the content. We, we love it, and we appreciate your fandom. Thank you very much. Uh, I won't be here tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. i got to get somebody to fill in for you. I, I'm sorry, chat. I will not be here tomorrow, but I'll be back Thursday morning. You know what? I'm going to try your phone just to see if you answer on the uh, – Do it. Can I say where you're going or no? Yeah, I'm going fishing. Yeah, he's gone, he's gone fishing. I'm gonna go. I'm braving the elements. Gonna go tuna fishing. It's called. The, it's not called the deadliest catch for no reason. All right. Stop. Stop. You better be safe. I'm worried about you. And everybody, I am not high right now. Why does everyone say that? Because your eyes are puffy. That's all. Dude, I'm getting older. I wake up early to work out, man. Did you already lift? Yeah. Oh, uh, see, I gotta get mine in. Was Olivia impressed? The other day, was she like, my God, he's way more buff than I thought? No, she didn't say that. I didn't think so. Yeah, well, Michelle, what'd she say? She said you were skinnier. She goes, well, I'm sure he was bigger back in the day. I think she's, she's probably just, the... yeah. I know that's a lie because she was just looking at Olivia the whole time. Well, I mean, they were sitting across from each other. So, yes. She, I don't even think she paid attention to the two of us. I think they had such a nice time. It was, you know, that's it. I know. Sorry. She, somebody didn't. Some good-looking woman didn't pay attention to you. Are you going to be okay? No, I just need Botox because everyone thinks I'm high. I'm, get, I'm going to get Botox. You guys have no, you're not. Botox. No, you're not. I'm stopping you right there. I'm stopping you. Do you understand? You no. You're not allowed to Botox. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Enjoy your Baseball Tuesday. I'll see you Wednesday with a very special guest. And happy fishing. Later.